This was the idea of Dr. Glenn Seaborg to make large quantities of heavy trans uranium isotopes. It was the only place designed to do that and reduce enough that the research community could have these materials to investigate. People who are on the cutting edge of science who are developing new things, new ways of doing things. That's pretty much what research and what science is all about, is solving problems. This is the only place some of their work can happen. Now back in those early days, the DOE labs and, uh, and universities all had research programs going on in, in heavy element research. The chemistry, the materials science, and the nuclear characteristics of them, they just didn't have the materials to work with. So we made them. Emory Collins was one of the first engineers to be hired at a new facility being constructed at Oak Ridge National Laboratory, the Radiochemical Engineering Development Center. Along with a high-flux isotope reactor, REDC was charged with producing heavy elements to support research needs. Americium, curium, berkelium, californium, einsteinium, and even fermium. We're probably the only manufacturer of these isotopes in the world. Four shifts worked around the clock to keep up with demand. Fred Chatton ran one of those shifts, establishing the processes and procedures as it went along. It was a challenging position, and you felt like you were accomplishing something every day or every week towards a goal of production of these transuranium isotopes. Among those produced over the decades were medical isotopes, like actinium-225, now being explored for its use in cancer treatment. We definitely tailor to the research customers because we have a lot of unique material. We allow people to do things that would not get done if there wasn't this facility and federal support for what we do. Radio chemist Rose Bowl calls herself a fancy dishwasher of actinides, but her ultra clean products confirm the significance of the work. We got a phone call from a patient once who called to thank us for our production of actinium-225. And that, yeah, that was pretty monumental in terms of realizing you were impacting somebody's life. But we're uniquely designed to do things nobody else can do. And that's where we shine. That same uniqueness enabled the discovery of new super heavy elements, including tennessine. The companion facilities at Oak Ridge were the only places in the world where the needed berkelium target could be made. Who would put on their bucket list, I'm gonna be part of a discovery team for an element. And my role was to purify the berkelium, which became the target for the production of the tennessine. REDC researcher Clarice Phelps was also part of the three-month-long production campaign that resulted in 22 milligrams of the ultra-pure berkelium. You have to take into consideration the, the half-life and things start decaying, so we only had a, a limited amount of time to purify this material, get it shipped out to the different countries that were using it for the confirmation of the discovery. They loved it and it, obviously it worked, so. <laughs> I would attribute that to the fact that we have a history of researchers and scientists who have worked with that kind of material. And then every time we do it, we kind of come up with another little way to make it better. But the detailed work that they have done has contributed to what we're still doing today. And has continued to attract new and challenging projects to the facility, such as replenishing the nation's stock of plutonium-238. Because of the heat admitted during its natural decay, plutonium-238 is used as a power source for NASA's deep space missions. If you're in this field, if you're in a research type position, you have to kind of know that eventually something that you do or something that you discover or help discover is going to be used for some end purpose. And so hopefully that end purpose is something that's useful and that can impact society or people's health or lead to new discoveries like new elements or things in different planets. While isotope production has been REDC's major focus, its combination of capabilities and expertise has also enabled research into the nuclear fuel cycle and the possibilities of reprocessing spent fuel from commercial reactors. The nuclear fuel cycle is pretty much like isotope making, and that's where it's easy to combine the two. So we put in a completely new set of equipment into cubicle five and cell five in uh, building 7920. Their experiments successfully demonstrated new methods and techniques in the 1980s and again in the 2000s when worldwide interest in nuclear power reemerged. So we've been able to keep our ADC going and meet regulations as we go. 
because of this continuing capability to do isotopes or fuel recycle. I'm proud of the REDC, yes. I guess because it's been in operation 50 years and been successful all that time. That is a testament to how back when they were building this, this facility, the forethought they put into what this building could be capable of. I see REDC as a place of tremendous history of the people that have worked here, the gifts and talents that they have put into this place, and the unique opportunities that we have. We are an evolving place, a place on the edge of discovery, because that's what we're designed to be.